Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and today I'm reviewing Four Northward from Sideroom Games. Four Northward is a solo trick-taking game, and if you're like solo trick-taking, that doesn't seem like it should be a thing. You're not wrong. It doesn't seem like it should be a thing, but it is indeed a thing. Now, I'm actually going to go ahead and set this up on camera for you to show you how quickly this game gets up and running. We have a little packet over here. We have this we could use. We have these. We have these. And we have our deck. That's going to be the stuff we need over here. Let's go ahead and show you absolutely everything because, again, I want to show you how quickly this moves. So, we're going to grab these cards. We're going to put these out. One, two. That's out of order. Let's go ahead and put these in order. We got zero, one, two, three, four, and this with it out, it being, you know, whatever. Let's go ahead and put this out. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Making sure this all lines up nicely on camera. These are the various realms you're trying to conquer. You'll notice that the middle regions have one star, two stars, three stars, and four stars, representing the fact that in a trick taking game, absolutes for either direction tend to be a bit harder to actually achieve. We're going to take our box and hand it over here so it looks nice on camera. And then we're going to grab this deck of cards and we're going to shuffle it up. The starting way you play is you just take the four jacks in the game and you use those as your allies and use everything else as leaders but I'm going to show you the slightly more advanced mode because there's the default mode slightly more advanced and then there's the uh, scenario book the noisy year which gives you a bunch of little scenario things to go through which we'll talk about soon enough but from here we're going to grab the first suit of each thing is going to be one of our allies so over here each of these are going to be our allies we'll talk more about them we got each of those colors this one's going to pop on over here we're going to have the next one's going to pop over here next one's going to pop here now any further reds now that we have all three any further reds will be discarded we continue putting these out. That's any further blues will be discarded now. Any further yellows will be discarded. We got our black over here, our black, and then we have a black. Happens to be it works out. We didn't need to discard anything. Had we drawn something else, we would have discarded it to ensure that you have three of each kind. Two up here, and then one down here. Now, these are your allies, and this is where we're going to go ahead and shuffle up our deck, and we're going to draw a hand of eight cards. We're going to have eight cards over here, and let's see how many tricks we think we're going to win. You see, each of these realms we're trying to conquer, we're trying to get as many points as possible. Officially, you're going to be looking for a score of 16, but ideally, we all know we're shooting for 20. We're going to put that over here to indicate which realm we're facing off against. We're going to draw a hand of eight cards to represent our hand over here. I'm going to show you this so you can see everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ignore my voice. It is slowly going away. Too much talking this past weekend. But we have this over here, this over here, this over here, and this is our hand. Now, the numbers range from 1 to 8, which means this is actually a pretty bad hand, although it's slightly better against a yellow uh, leader because that will be the trump suit. So let's try to think through what we can win over here. I think we have a decent chance... I think we have a decent chance of losing everything. I don't know if we could or not. Interesting. I don't think we're going to be too ambitious here. We, we could try to go for the zero, but let's try to go ahead for the two over here. We have a bad enough hand. We're going to try to win two and exactly two tricks in this region. To that end, we're going to grab the deck, and we're going to look at our hand of cards, and we're going to start the process of trying to win exactly two tricks. We're going to play a black three over here, and this is where we already have no black cards. Which means, in general, in the game, whenever you break, whenever you break suit, in this case, we have to break suit because we don't have black cards. If you break suit into the leader's color, which is this color, by the way, it's indicate this is the uh, zone we're fighting over. So, if we broke into the reds over here, the three of the six, we would win. We are instead going to break into. Ooh, we do want to. I guess we do want to win something. Let's go ahead and break into this suit, which should give us a win. I think hopefully the only win. So we're going to go ahead and play the six over here. That's going to be a, tr a trump that we win. We're going to uh, mark it by putting one card over there as our so as our marker to show that we've won one suit. We're going to play the next one over here. We have an eight. We have to break suit again. We could simply break into it, but I think at this point we're going to intentionally lose with the six over here. So we're going to play the six. We're breaking out of the suit and not into their leader's color. So we're going to lose. We're going to do it again. Over here, we have to play our three, which means we may not even be able to win one. Now, we do have these cards over here. We haven't talked about the abilities yet, but let's play some things. We have a three over here. We're going to play our two and lose to it. We are going to go ahead and have a seven over here. We'll play our one and lose to that. Draw a card, unexhaust another exhausted ally. If your next response is even, draw a card after responding. Discard all cards with value one, two, or three. This is going to be tricky. Unless we draw a... Unless we drew a yellow two right now, we're losing. So we're going to go ahead and draw a card to see what we can draw over here. We now have that. So we have slightly more options on the table as far as winning or losing. Let's go ahead and draw the next card. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and win that four with the five. Then we're going to draw the next card, which will be the two. <laughs> Unbelievable. So we actually just, we drew the one thing we needed, which is bad. If your next spot, 
I think we're going to lose, unfortunately. So this is, it is what it is. I don't see another way around it. Basically, we drew the one card that we would lose to, which is the yellow two. And that means we have to beat it with a four over here. We now have three cards in our score pile and none of our abilities will help us get rid of cards in score piles. Sometimes they will. In this case, we can now go ahead and tap Baron of Flowers, discard all cards with the value one, two, or three. And we have unfortunately won three in a zone where we wanted to win two. So we unfortunately are not getting that point. That point is gone. Let's go ahead and reset and go to the next round. This is where the solo trick taking game, this actually works out well because one of my complaints about the game, we literally just encountered. Anyways, let's go ahead and continue. In the meantime, and I, I like the game. I'll save you some time. I like the game, but we do, we do have complaints. We is me. This is a solo game. Anyways, we're going to draw our next hand and do this one more time and then go ahead and dive into the review, showing you how this plays out. So we have our hand of eight cards, four, eight, beautiful. We have a lot of blacks over here. We have no, we have some higher values over here. Things are looking like we have a pretty decent, I think I can go ahead and tackle five tricks. Do I think I can win five tricks? Especially folding. And now I'm going to win four tricks. So I'm going to go ahead and try to win four tricks right now. So I'm going to draw the first card. We have a red six. We can break into our suit because we don't have red. So we got our first trick one. We draw the next card. It's a five. We can go ahead and play a blue six. We have our second trick one. Now we actually want to lose some tricks over here. We have a three over here. We're going to go ahead and play our yellow six. We have our third trick one. This is not great. Uh, discard all cards of value one, two, or three. If your next response is even draw a card. If it's odd, discard a card. So I'm going to go ahead and tap Baron of Eyes to use his ability, and let's see what happens. We drew a seven. Okay, so a seven over here means we're going to go ahead. Oh, I kind of want to lose the eight. Losing the 8 is good, but losing the 8 would mean I draw a card. So we are going to lose this 5 over here, which is going to be, because I responded with a 5, we are breaking suit not into blue, so that's a loss. And because of this ability, we can go ahead and play this card over here to do that, which means now we draw another card. Let's see what we drew. We drew a red 2. We're going to break suit into this one, which means we lose. Oh, no, wait one second. We need to try to win 4 over here. We need to win 4. And that's not good. Hmm. Let's go ahead and discard a two then instead. So we're going to discard the two, respond with that. We're going to draw another card and we drew a five. That's not good. We're going to discard the four and get that. We're going to draw a card and draw this into our hand. That was not helpful. We're going to unexhaust another ally with that ability. And then we're going to hope for a one or two of black, but we could. That's not going to be helpful. It's not going to be helpful. Again, again, it's not going to work. Okay, we're going to respond with that one. And then if you're holding fewer than eight cards, draw until you have eight cards in your hand. So we're going to go ahead and play that to draw until we have eight cards in our hand. We're losing too many. Unfortunately, this is going to go very poorly for us. Five, six. Uh, we got six over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Now I have more tricks on my sleeve to help me win when I'm losing. Because, for instance, Jack of Claws over there. But still, let's go ahead and figure this out. We now go ahead and see the next card. The next card is going to be a two. We are going to win that with our seven over here. That's our fourth trick over there. And now we're hoping, we're hoping, hmm. I'm going to go ahead and tap this over here. Okay, so if our next response is odd, we're going to respond by discarding a card. We have the one over here. You've got to be kidding me. So unfortunately, we now have to win this with a four because we have to. And that means we are again over our tricks. It's cool. I really am good at this game, by the way. I really am. Uh, we are now over. And again, there's nothing that can help us. So we're going to stop the trick, which means that is basically how you're trying to play the game. So some slight tactical miscalculations here, but the basic idea of the game is you have a trick. You have a bunch of cards. These are 32 cards, one to eight of four different colors. You have your hand of eight. With your hand of eight, you're going to decide which region to tackle. Once you decide which region to tackle, you're trying to win exactly that many tricks, zero and seven being obviously the hardest. You have your allies you can use every single round, but then let's say I had won that king of flowers. If I had won that king of flowers, they are now available to proxy in for an ally in a future round. I can go ahead and say, I'm going to proxy this in for the Lady of Leaves one round, and that way I have an extra ability, not really extra, but rather a different ability. So you're going to look at the uh, vast array of abilities and utilize those abilities when you think it's most beneficial to either help you improve your score or hurt your score because different allies do different things. And then when the round is over, you have to get rid of the King of Flowers and put back the Lady of Leaves, whether you use the King of Flowers or not. And now the King of Flowers is gone. You've used your ally towards, you've used that, you know, new friend you've made in 
the uh, forest towards your advantage to help you win all the regions. At the end of the game, you'll total up your amount of points. There's a possible total of 20 points if you perfectly win all of them. Yes, there is a scoring metric over here that says 16, 18, and 20, but we both know anything less than 20 is not really winning. I mean, it is, but still. And then past that, there's also the Noisy Year, a scenario book of giving you a bunch of different scenarios over here, all very uh, small in terms of its print, but giving you different scenarios, giving you different small adjustments and a way to go through the game that changes up drastically what you're doing. They'll give you specific allies you're playing with, and then past that, specific rules and combinations in place. So for example, like the first one, if I recall correctly, I say that as I try to look it up. The first one is whenever... Uh, whenever you respond to a trick, you have to put all other cards in your hand with the same value into the same pile. So if you lose with a five, you will lose all your fives. If you win with a five, you'll win all your fives. So it gives you a rules twist plus specific allies you're playing with, which mix up the experience tremendously. And that is basically for Northward. Rinse and repeat until you're done with the game. I don't know if this is a Kickstarter extra or not, but we have these extra royals over here. So you have 24 possible royals, of which you only see 12 each game, and of which only four are your allies, giving you a lot of replayability. And that is basically the game, which brings us to our view, starting off with ease of play, Ease of play is really easy on this game. This is an easy, easy game to dive into. Uh, the rules are pretty easy. If you've played Trick Taking, the general concept is there. The allies versus, you know, additional people you can help out. Overall, this is just very, very simple to understand and pick up if you have played Trick Taking games. If you have not, then it might be a mental hoop to jump through. I don't know because I have played Trick Taking games, but it's very easy to set up and play. And accessibility wise, in terms of everything, this game plays in like, you know, 20 minutes for, for a full session, maybe a little more, could run 30 minutes easily. And I have already played this game on a plane with like the tray table and everything so definitely fairly easy to play this wherever you go as far as what i like don't like and can see others not liking i'm going to start off with the uh easy part of it which is just the presentation the art is gorgeous and cute the little allies you have and the people you're winning over it's all just fun as far as you go into the jungle and win over the kings the queens the princes the barons and all of that as you go through this game so overall just very cute good art pulls you in ease of play all those things are pluses the general system though is very compelling. It's a solo trick-taking game, which on its head shouldn't really work, but in practice, it really does. Just like any other trick-taking game, you're playing the odds, you're playing the numbers, and you're playing your hand. But the difference is, this time, instead of playing the other players, you're playing against the deck, and you're hoping to try to play the odds of any situation with the combination of your abilities to try to mitigate and manage those odds to to help in your favor as much as possible. And the variety of royalty is going to be a big part of the experience as well. So in addition to just a very clean system where you have a hand of eight cards, with that hand of eight cards, you make a general prediction as far as how many tricks you can win or not win. Then you actually go through the sequence of playing out the cards, responding to each trick in a very quick, clean system, just very engaging to go through. And then the abilities just really add to that. The abilities you have, every com every game you have, the different combination of four abilities that are always present, plus the ones you can proxy in, are going to give you a ton of variety to the experience. An absolute ton of variety. You will never play the same exact puzzle twice. You will have the same general system in play, but the nuances of that puzzle and which levers you can kind of push or pull a little bit more actively on, depending on the abilities at your disposal, absolutely huge and changed up the gameplay. And then if that wasn't enough, the scenario guide, and by the way, we only have, you only get 12 out of the 24 royals in play at any given point. So the combination you have is totally different game to game, and the combination of the four allies you get, because those four allies are the ones you're going to use most commonly. The others are generically there, but the four allies are really going to change the game for you. Again, a ton of variety. And then the scenario book, the noisy year, this is delightful. And they can release more stuff like this in the future, small little rules adjustments that, again, give you that same core system while allowing you to experience it differently because of those small tweaks and adjustments. Love this scenario book. Really gives you a reason to go through every single one of those puzzles. It's just a lot of fun, and it's a nice little cherry on top of a very quick, clean, solo engine. Satisfying solo engine. As far as what I don't like in the game, there's really just one thing, and you've seen it in this game, which is ultimately you're aiming for the perfect game here. You are aiming for the perfect game. Yes, you can achieve 18 points. It is much more satisfying to get a clean, perfect game here, and the problem with that is that luck, luck can beat stats here and there. Across the number of tricks you're playing, you've seen it here already, where I played it out over here, I had a single card that I could lose to, that single blue 2 or yellow 2, whatever it was, black 2, I think it was a black 2, I had a single card in the game that I could lose to, and every single other card I would win against, so I played, or vice versa, I would lose against and win against, whatever it was, I played the odds perfectly in that first trick, the second trick I think I could have done better, but that first trick I played the odds perfectly, I knew exactly what I was doing, and ultimately, 
statistics and odds don't always work for you, especially as you're playing more and more. So at the end of the day, you can play as well as you possibly can, but because you're aiming for that perfect score as opposed to beating another player, it means sometimes a single a single instance of, of stats and math defying expectations will make sure you don't get that perfect score. As far as I can see, others not liking, first of all, it's more of a solo game than a trick-taking game. That's an interesting distinction, but I think it's important to make. I think if you like if you like solo games, but you don't yet know if you like trick-taking games, I think this is worth trying. I think this is worth seeing if it's a puzzle that's enjoyable to you. But if you like trick-taking games, but you don't like solo games, I don't think you'll like this. I think that despite the fact that the framework is trick-taking, I still think it is primarily a solo experience and a solo puzzle. And that does mean that you have to know what you're looking for here. If you're looking for trick-taking and not solo, this is still a solo experience. Versus vice versa, if you're looking for solo not trick taking, as I said already, it's probably still worth a try. And the second thing is, you'll proxy in heroes throughout the course of the game that don't, I mean royalty, not heroes, you'll proxy in royalty that may not help you. Over the course of the game, you're going to have times where you have that ally, you move them in because you hope it'll help you with the trick, and then you don't even get to use them, and they're still gone at the end of the trick. It's a little not satisfying to have that happen. I almost wish that you could pull in an ally and then push it back if you didn't use it. You could say, hey, you know what, you didn't actually help me this round, so I'm going to push you back. Still takes up a slot but at least you can kind of keep it around. But at the end of the day, use it or lose it in this game, which is slightly annoying. Not a big deal, but slightly annoying. As far as final thoughts on 4 Northwood, <clears throat> ignoring my voice, which again is gone, I think 4 Northwood is a delightful game. I really enjoy this one. Like, this to me is one of my new favorite trick-taking games. Again, more solo than trick-taking, but one of my new favorite trick-taking games. The experience is clean. The, 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 the art's beautiful. The card quality, I don't even know if I'm going to sleeve this game. It's got some, I don't know what this card stock is, but it's wonderful. I love it. And then it just, it plays well. It fits in a small box. It literally plays on an airplane if you want to. It, it plays on your table nicely with a little bit more space if you don't want to deal with a cramped uh, airline, you know, tray table or whatnot. And it gives you a variety to the experience within the core system, plus a scenario book that really gives you even more reasons to dive into it. I think it's a great experience, and I'm really overall enjoying this one. It's a lovely little puzzle. It's charming. My only real complaint is that you can play as well as you can, and sometimes the odds work against you, and then it's just a drop less satisfying to get 18 points than it is 20. And by a drop less satisfying, I mean very much less satisfying. Overall, this is a 4.5 out of 5 for me. I really, really like this game. It is charming. It's one of my new favorites, and it fits in a small, tiny little box, does not take up space on the shelf, sets up very quickly, as you saw over here. In fact, I'm going to I'm gonna put it away while I finish this conversation. So overall, 4.5 out of 5, really liking this one, and highly recommend 4 Northwood from Side Room Games. As far as other game recommendations, if you're looking for other game recommendations, I recommend Ghosts of Christmas as being one of my favorite trick-taking games. That definitely feels more like a trick taking game than this one, meaning they're both trick taking, but Ghost of Christmas is, again, a delightful little puzzle. And if you're looking for solo experiences that give you a different puzzle within, well, totally different genres, this kind of vaguely reminded me of Fishing Lessons. I say vaguely because, well, it's not an exact fit, but for me, Fishing Lessons from Button Shy Games was another fun little game of trying to predict around how things will play out. Uh, I very much enjoyed that puzzle as well from Button Shy. I think I like this one more. I definitely like this one more. Not, not I think. But both of them are giving you fun little solo experiences. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. This is for Northwood. Hope you found this video helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.